I'm uh, Richard Marks, and I'm a uh, full-time entertainment transactional attorney. I make deals. And are you familiar with the testimony of um, Catherine Arnold in this matter? Yes, she's not an expert in deal making. Her assessment of damages is built on nothing, and it's wildly speculative. And are you also familiar with her testimony that an actor will renegotiate a 50 to 100 percent increase in their salary for the next optional film? Yes, I heard her say that. Do you agree with those opinions? Absolutely not. What we're dealing with is a test option agreement. It's a multi-picture agreement so that if they're chosen for the part, we have the full contract. There's no renegotiation. If they get the part, normally their salary is inflated from their normal salary. In this case, Ms. Hurd's first salary when she got the part was $450,000. If Warner Brothers decided to make a next movie, they could recast her. They had no obligation. All they had was an option. But if they did cast her, they had agreed to more than double her salary to get to the million dollars. What's the significance of the test part in a test option agreement? The test significance is that an established actor usually wouldn't test. They'd be offered the role. Are you familiar with Ms. Arnold's opinion that Ms. Hurd's salary for Aquaman 2 could have been renegotiated to around $4 million? I am. Do you agree with that opinion? No. Ms. Arnold, for some substance, says, well, uh, Jason Momoa got to do it. Jason Momoa has had a history before the first movie with Amber Heard. He played Aquaman. Are you aware that Ms. Arnold's opined that but for the alleged defamatory statements, Ms. Heard would have earned $45 million in the last 18 months? Yes, I am. Do you agree with that testimony? No. In Aquaman 2, Amber Heard has already had this huge increase. She worked on Aquaman 2 for $2 million. What Ms. Arnold is saying is, oh, she should have worked on it for $4 million, which I disagree with. And Ms. Arnold says that Ms. Hurd's breakout moment, her star is born moment, is Christmas 2018. If that's true, and I don't think it's true, those moments don't normally happen to supporting cast. But if it's true, as a deal maker, you would expect to flock in to take advantage of this hot star and to sign them up from Christmas 2018 to spring 20, where there, there is none of this activity. The, the stars born phenomena didn't happen. And Jason Momoa is not a comparable actor. He played Conan the Barbarian. He was in Game of Thrones. Objection. It's not a Objection, comparable Honor, actor. All right. What Ms. Arnold shows you is these non-comparable actors, she doesn't show you why she's comparing Amber Heard to these uncomparable actors, but she's making the comparison. She's saying, well, they had all these deals, why wouldn't she? But for the statements that happened 16 months later, and I guess my primary question is what happened in the 16 months, do you have an opinion about Ms. Arnold's testimony that Ms. Heard would have made $1 million an episode following her A Star is Born moment? Yes, I, I heard it. After Aquaman won, she got her salary doubled to a $1 million. Ms. Arnold wants you to believe that that $1 million would translate into, she'd get that for each episode of a series. And I can tell you, rarely does an actor get a $1 million for a series episode. And again, in those 16 months, there were no offers for series at a million dollars an episode. In fact, her only series is the 200,000. And if you look at her resume, the series that Ms. Heard were in, I think the longest one ran eight episodes. Jason Momoa has had a series with 78 episodes, with 44 episodes, with 21 episodes, with 18 episodes, with 21 episodes. Again, there's not a comparableness there.